Very well, thank you. A little bit of a Princess Fiona situation going on. Yeah, sure. I love it. I love it. It's um, Allison Hightower, but I'm decided to lean in. I love it. I, I love that you're doing Allison Hightower. Really? Uh, so my wife um, and I are big fans. Okay, great. Uh, Me too. She's, she's very... Um, well, I'm just gonna leave it. At, I'm just, I'm just, I'm gonna leave it at. We love the show. Yeah. We love the pedigree of these characters as to where their legacies lead. Yeah. Very cool. Love Thank the look. You. I appreciate that. Yeah, she's a complicated character. Yes, right? indeed. The best, the best indeed, indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jason. I know you. Yeah. yeah nice you. to see you, <laughs> know, buddy. Uh, Manny. Manny, we've met before. Yes. yes? We yeah. Maybe on some Ranger stuff. And I know last in San Diego yeah, as well. San Diego. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm Maria from Temple of Me. Nice Hi, Maria. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you as well. One. Cool. It's my second interview doing this. So. Well, welcome to the three of you, uh, and, and thanks for the opportunity today. Congratulations. Th th thanks. Big, 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 big things happening. Got the release. Got some news already pouring out. I want to go to what I feel is one of my favorite IPs. That's the Office. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Are you, are you making the request that we do The Office? No, I'm asking about, I know we have the panel, so I know there's going to be some news. I know we got to know a little bit. So in okay. all fairness, we, none of our content won't be out before the panel. Okay. We'll be at the panel, so maybe we can talk a little bit about the panel stuff for the record here. He's making so close to his heart. Hey, Arthur, are we talking about the big O word over here? Uh, without yes? any details. Without any detail. Okay, yeah, I'm getting the thumbs up from Jonah. All right. Yeah, we're doing The Office. Um, uh, and I am very, very excited that for that for a variety of reasons. Uh, without getting into too much detail, I, I think what fans are going to discover is a very faithful and somewhat unexpected um, contribution, uh, not only in-game, but to kind of greater Office lore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, to be clear, it's not like Michael and Dwight are going to kiss in the game or anything. <laughs> um, but I think folks are going to be very excited to see how we're doing it oh, and yes. with who we are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, we're very excited to bring the office in-game in, yeah. um, in a way that only further complements what we've already established. Yeah. What are you looking for specifically from such an activation? The, the, the cutscenes, obviously, and I want to kind of see how you all are going to take that and kind of make it your own. And then also, is there potential that it leads to like, because we hear so much office news in terms of the remake that's happening, and then there's this other version that's apparently being launched very soon too. So just, you know, as, as, as nerds and fans, we always look at the connectability here, and obviously we can't get enough of the office. So yeah. it's like, what are you gonna do with it and make it special? So I'm very think, excited for that. Um, what I will tell you is what we are not doing. Uh, what we are not doing is just diving into the sales record and being like, everybody likes the Recyclops, so we're gonna have Recyclops in there for no reason, <laughs> right? What we are doing, and maybe Recyclops will find its way in there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But like, what we what we are doing is kind of the opposite, which is just, how do we faithfully recreate the environment, the setup, the characters you know and love, um, and still somehow impossibly give them a unique ranged attack, a unique melee attack, and in some cases, a special ability. Um, so, it will, it will feel like a grand revisit to the office you know and love. Um, and uh, and then we'll do, you know, we'll have some fun and, and, and visit some of folks' favorite episodes of all time. Dwight has to come out with at least 20 skins <laughs> off break. <laughs> just, just FYI. Uh, to that, I will simply say, keep an eye as to um, when re we release the office yeah, 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 and yeah, how that maybe not. potentially ties thematically to what you're talking all about. Right. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Yeah, of course, of course. So keeping you more general, how did you go about selecting which franchises to include in the game? Because you guys picked some very unique ones. We did. One. Uh, so um, have you ever heard of the lottery before? And like the ping pong balls yeah, that come, no, 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 it's nothing oh. like that. Uh, <laughs> I was like, really? No, 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 like, not at all, not at all, not at all. Uh, so very, um, it, it, not complicated in terms of selection, somewhat complicated in terms of execution. Okay. So uh, we knew out the get that we wanted, um, like the, the, the big picture was 
many franchises, kind of an eclectic mix of franchises, an eclectic mix of genre and age, age demographics, um, because that's more of a grand celebration of Funko, right? Like, Funko is for everybody. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that everybody felt like they had a point of connectivity to the game. You don't, let's be clear, like, you don't have to be the world's biggest Back to the Future fan, like myself. Maybe not the world's biggest, but I'm, like, on the map there. Um, uh, and then, respectively, um, maybe you're just really hardcore into the thing. Or maybe you like the thing in Jurassic, but you're not really into Scott Pilgrim. That's okay. Um, all of those things were meant to be platforms of discovery, and then ultimately we created a system whereby you could explore those things just from a pure video game standpoint, and then maybe get into those franchises as a consequence. So, like, I had a gentleman yesterday uh, that cruised by the booth, and he's like, okay, I have a confession. Um, I knew nothing about Umbrella Academy before I started playing the game. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and maybe too late. <laughs> and, and over the last three weeks, I have binged all, what is it, four seasons? Yeah. Five seasons? Yeah. Um, and he's like, I've been watching nothing else. I'm totally all about the show now. And I think that was that was always part of the, the mission. So to your question specifically, how did we choose our franchises? It really started with... A weekend getaway, that sounds so romantic, it's not. <laughs> Where we had some some folks from Funko, myself included. Um, we had John Burton of 1010. We literally rented an Airbnb. We locked ourselves in there. Um, and we just had paper on the walls. Uh, and it started with high concept for how the game worked. And then we broke it down into genre. And we knew we wanted something adventure. We knew we wanted something horror. We knew we wanted something um, comedy, right? That's where it started. Then we started having a real conversation with folks like NBC Universal, a couple other studios, about who's willing to play ball here. Like we have kind of a, a crazy cast of expectations and hopes, and we have some incredible talent in 1010 coming from all the Lego games prior, right? So there's a degree of trust. NBC Universal was very kind in saying, we'll play ball. Um, and so from there it was, okay, let's dive into the catalog. We got all sorts of goodness. Uh, and then we just kind of picked and choose our favorites. There was some back and forth, but ultimately yeah. we landed on 21 from NBC Universal and about a dozen from the outside world. Mm -hmm. And going forward, you can expect a little bit more of the same, kind of a 50-50. So okay. some more NBC Universal stuff like The Office, yeah. uh, and some more unexpected stuff, which you're going to learn about in about an Parks hour. <laughs> I personally want Parks and yeah, Rec. Yeah, I was like, that's so my favorite. Now all the mockumentary is on the table now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here's the thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Going all off. So <laughs> my wife and I bought our first home. Oh. Uh, la thank you. Last summer, um, we ultimately landed in Old Town, Pasadena. Uh, we walked into our unit, which at that time was, it's a new building, unfinished. Beautiful window at the tail end of it. We walked over, and if you look out the window, it is literally Pawnee City Hall. Oh, yeah, no, I've been there. Um, I mean, like, bold and large, and it fills the whole window. And we were like, uh-oh, <laughs> we found our place. So, yes, I, I have... Uh, personal aspirations to get um, April Ludgate in game. Oh, yeah. I would love oh, I would love to do something with little Sebastian. Um, so yeah, that is on my personal radar standby. What has, so what has that done for the ecosystem yeah. since maybe the other Studios and brands have seen the success of it, seen how they can play around with each other. And it really would be a great marketing tool to get people, like you were mentioning, like uh, Gentleman Hats and Umbrella Academy. So all of a sudden, maybe maybe your phone starts ringing, like, okay, now we will, we would really be interested in having like this IP, this IP in the game. Now, now is it like a waiting list or? A waiting <laughs> list. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a waiting list per se. I mean, it's lovely to be the bell of the ball. You know, like everybody wants to go um, together. I think for us, again, it just it comes from a place of authenticity. We're not going to integrate something that suddenly becomes the dominant voice in the title. We also we want to be mindful of the the destiny that we're building um, over what I like to call you know the next the next decade of gaming, so to speak. Excuse me. Um, so some of those conversations are absolutely appropriate to have for Funko Fusion and the roadmap that we have slated. Maybe some of those other conversations are more appropriate to be a focused IP for a game two or a game three, right? Um, and that's that's what we're living through right now is like, we love the dress, we look great, we're going to have a good evening, right? Um, we've chosen to go with a bunch of friends, not just one person. But I think, uh, you know, there's there are other dances that are coming up and maybe we'll be a bit more um, singular in our focus. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely interested about that that roadmap because as a consumer 
we look at certain games like um, Fortnite, which why do we need a Fortnite too? Because of their expansion. Grand yeah. Theft Auto, as much as we love that, but the, the DLCs have been so re refreshing for us. And then even as somebody like Overwatch, it was just another game, it was just like, the two was a hard transition over. And with this, we know the possibilities of the, the, the IPs that you all have. To think about a second one is like, where do we differentiate from that? But the most important thing is because we talk, uh, so behind the curtains here, you all have already taken consumer feedback and yeah. have already applied it a month in, uh, which is big for us. Uh, that keeps us having faith for you all. Games like Cyberpunk, we lost faith because they was like, oh, whoa, well, wait a minute, we'll, we'll come back later, yeah. later, yeah. later. Um, and then we have the big news, which is coming up about the co-op. Yes. Which means that instantly this was either on the table or this was instant feedback. What's this news mean? How did you land on this? And did this move up in the roadmap? Great question. So, um, First, just to say it plain, as, plain, as a regular Fortnite player, as a guy who spent a decade at Blizzard and was part of uh, early days on Project Titan, and then eventually, yeah. you know, what became Overwatch, uh, which was my last technical credit when I was uh, at Blizzard, like, I have profound respect for those titles, and they emerged in a way that um, was conditionally unique to them in the time in which they were born, right? Um, like I played the Fortnite beta when it was a zombie survival game yes. <laughs> uh, before it was ever you know the the PvP dream that we know yeah. it to be today. Uh, but I want to be explicit in saying that uh, Funko Fusion is not a uh, games as a service model. It was never that. It will not. It will not be a live service game. We're not coming after um, every dollar that you got in your pocket with every imaginable. You know, like that. That's not our thing. Yeah. Our thing was always to give you a complete and comprehensive game for the price point. Um, and uh, while we delivered that um, on day one, to your point, you know, we had built this thing in a vacuum and um, and it's an independent developer and there was a, a wealth of fan feedback that we had to work with um, because people were finally getting in there and they're like, hey, have you hit this wall 50 times? Did you know that if you hit this wall 50 times it causes the mission to kind of crack or whatever? And we're like, why would you hit the wall 50 times? Anyway, my, my, my point is I am so impressed with 1010 as a developer that exactly to your point, any other studio on the planet probably would have been, been like, Nah, we're good. Yeah. Like, you guys just do your thing. Yeah. <laughs> 1010 chose to go the opposite direction, which is so rare in the industry, especially at a time when, like, it's not super healthy out there yeah. um, for game studios, nonetheless, indie game studios. Yeah. And so 1010, to their credit, over the last four weeks, have delivered, as of today, three massive quality of life updates and probably 16 micro patches. Yeah that were meant to address not only bugs, but actually changing the meta of the game so that people are having a better experience overall. And some of their direct suggestions, by example, we want character unlocks on minute one um, to be able to take care any character in into any world if you've unlocked that character, as opposed to previously, it was sort of locked to the characters within their given worlds until you completed the game, right? and then it became free for all, now all those walls are down because you hit them 50 times and we knocked those walls down. <laughs> um, but uh, but the, the, the point is they've been super responsive, super receptive, re receptive to fan feedback. And I think things like co-op, they were always on the map. They've become very important as part of this overall exchange of value. Um, as I teed up before today's interview, I had the good fortune of being at the Colbert um, show uh, last night, and uh, and Stephen Colbert came out and and he said, "Look, um, I want to be clear here. Anything that you give me, we will be able to give you back, right?" So. I, I just want to say the same two things that I tell everybody, um, every audience that steps into the theater, which is thank you for being here, have a great show, right? And I think that's illustrative of the dynamism that we want with the audience, which is thank you for being here. On the roadmap, we're going to send out all sorts of free cookies because you've been so patient with us or so good to us, right? So thank you for being here. The second piece is um, have a great show. Thank you for being a part of this process. Let's continue to build something together. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm here for the ride. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Jonathan's not saying no, so okay. yeah, we're going. Oh, okay. Okay, so do you want to take it? Okay. Uh, 
So what are the long-term goals for Funko and the gaming experience? Can we expect other collabs or other games coming out? Can you well, tease anything? Uh, what I can definitely tease is that uh, really excited to keep working with Arthur and team um, on more of more for both Fusion and maybe future titles um, that we are not announcing here today. Uh, but uh, other things that you know we're, we're experimenting with, um, last week we just uh, released a collaboration with our friends over at Dreamlight Valley, and so you can actually unlock Loungefly backpacks in-game today in Dreamlight Valley for their some six million odd regularly active players, right? So some of that, right? Like I think we want to double down with our friends at 1010 and then also explore some other new ways to play. Thank you so much. No, thank you guys. Yeah, thanks for hanging out.